regular travelers by ship or boat share the most haunting sights they've witnessed at sea. I don't travel frequently, but last year, my grandparents paid for a cruise for our family. One night, we were passing by an area prone to ships and oil rigs. Me and my father were sitting on the deck of our room, looking at them and seeing them. After we pass the island and ships, we see a light far out in the distance. At first, I assumed it was an oil rig, but it was moving erratically, and I thought maybe it was a cargo ship getting rocked by waves until we got closer and this thing moved upwards of 1000 feet in the air. Me and my dad were very confused and didn't think much of it, if it made noise, I wouldn't know the ship we were on was loud at this time. Anyway, my grandparents call us up to their room on the opposite side of the ship. We get to the elevators, and I tell my family I'd meet them there, as I had left something in the room, but I'm not sure what it was. When I was there, I checked on the light, and it was gone. The ship made no course corrections, and I was gone from upwards to 40 seconds, and we had just passed it. Still confused on what it was. Well, it wasn't me, but a long time ago, before I was even born, my father decided to go tuna fishing with his friends, and tuna fishing boats are super long and thin. I guess I'd, it takes about 5 hours to get from land to the middle of the ocean in their boat so once they got there it was dark and the wind was picking up, as they were slowing down he heard the captain shouting orders and everyone doing stuff seeming to be in a rush, then out of nowhere the nose of the boat goes up into the air to where the boat was like this stick in the middle of all the giant 10 feet tall waves around them. My father went down into this room but he could still see the ocean he told me that he felt his blood run cold from how afraid he was, the waves were endless just one after another, the captain said it was too dangerous to go fishing but he said if they wanted to stay they could but it was a 83% chance they would sink so they headed back and as soon as they got back he looked at the ocean and it was like giant mirror to the moon, not a single wave to be seen. The next day, he went back because he wanted tuna. I was able to explain it after it happened, but beforehand it scared the bejesus out of me. We were steaming up the back side of the cape, headed to P-Town to go after Blue Fin. I was standing watch at the wheel at around midnight, intently watching the radar for any other vessels, when this green blob appeared on the little round screen. The blob grew larger and larger, but I couldn't see anything in the darkness. It was a clear, moonless night, and I could see stars above me but not on the horizon. The beach was to my port side, about a mile to our west, when all of a sudden the blob overtook us. It was a white squall filled with hail that pounded the boat hard. Skipper came bounding up from the cuddy with a WTF look on his face, grabbed the wheel, and powered us up straight into the wind. Everything that wasn't tied down became airborne and landed somewhere it hadn't before. The storm was over almost as fast as it came up, but we were soaked, cold, and full of water. It took a good couple of hours to straighten up and dry out, but we made it to P-Town and actually caught a nice fish. This will probably get buried, but it's worth telling. The only explanation I've come up with is that my uncle was fucking with us, but it's still very eerie. I was 11. My dad would come visit me every summer and take me on some sort of vacation. That summer, he decided to take me to see my uncle and cousins in Corpus Christi. My uncle made a lot of money in the oil industry and was loaded. He loved the sea. He had multiple fishing boats and owned a house on a very small island about three hours offshore. The plan was to go spend a few nights at the house. I should also mention that my uncle is very superstitious and strongly believes in bad luck. He said at the island house there are 10 safari hats on the walls of the living room that the previous owner left behind, and that if you touch those hats, you'll get very bad luck. He said he touched one one time, and ever since, he gets bad luck when he's near the island. He even said the hats might be haunted. This is important later. We left shore on his motorboat and headed for the island. It was a smooth ride there, but just as soon as the island came into view over the horizon, the motor died. He did everything in his power to fix it, but with no luck. He blamed it on those damn safari hats. Luckily, he had two large oars on board, and we used those to get to the island. The island was a lot smaller than I thought it would be, and there were four other houses on the island owned by other people. There were no other boats on the island, which led us to believe we were the only ones there, I think. I walked into our house, and sure enough, I saw 10 very old safari hats in the living room of the house. I was reminded again to not touch them. I didn't. That night, we were all hanging out around a campfire when we heard a very eerie echo. Which didn't make sense on the wide open sea. We shrugged it off as whales and continued with our business. Shortly after that, we saw strange lights aimed at us from about a football field's length offshore. My uncle and dad got nervous. They said it was too close to be a ship but too far to be just a flashlight. The light never went away. That night, 
We all went to bed in a room with five bunk beds. There was no AC at this house, so we left the door open for a breeze. In the middle of the night, I was woken up by the sound of someone hailing ass through our room, through the living room, and out the door. When they went out the door, it slammed shut, waking up everyone. My uncle and dad went to check it out and came back, saying the breeze must have closed it. We all went back to sleep. When we woke the next morning and went to the living room to drink coffee and eat, we noticed that three of the safari hats were missing. My uncle acted like he saw a ghost. We personally went and knocked on every door on the island, but no one was there. We were all alone. He called his fishing buddy on a satellite phone to come get us. We had to be towed back home. Weird experience. Not technically on topic, but very close, I go scuba diving very regularly, all over the place. And see some fantastic things, all sorts of creatures, reefs, etc. One of the dive sites I go to regularly has a rock we use as a landmark. This is a huge black, basalt stone that nothing grows on. It's in the middle of a reef, but nothing grows on it. It's about 15 meters across. Well anyway, we're on a night dive, and something takes off from the floor, covered in bioluminescent spots. It looked like a manta ray when we shined our torches on it. The area we're in is about 20 meters deep, and we're 10 meters down. This thing swims between us and our rock landmark and fully covers the rock for a good second or two as it swims over it. Neither I nor my dive buddy could figure out what the hell it was. In your dive log, you're supposed to record anything interesting you see. Just put it down as dinosaur. I haven't spent too much time on the water. I just went on some minor fishing trips with my dad and some of his friends when I was young. The only strange thing that ever happened was on Lake Texoma, Texas slash Arkansas, with my dad and a friend of his. We were fishing and didn't catch anything, so we went to another part of the lake to swim. We ended up seeing this huge shadow under the water, perhaps about six feet long. My dad noticed it first and caught me before I jumped off the boat into the water right next to it. Ever since then, I've been scared of the water. Not so bad I can't swim, just that it makes my skin crawl to think of what might be under me. I'm not very well traveled, but I pretty much grew up on the beach, as our family owns some RV trailers there for get-togethers, fishing trips, summer vacations, etc. One night after everyone else went to bed, I was still up on the top deck, watching the sky. I have a lifelong interest in astronomy and often just gaze up. Some movement caught my eye, and I turned to see a roughly spherical flock of about a dozen dimly glowing white orbs silently traversing through the sky about one quarter mile away and only 100 feet high. The immediately weird thing is that there was no visible structure connecting them, yet they all moved as if connected or so synchronized to seem so, no bobbing, wobbling, drifting as might be expected with balloons or something being propelled by wind. These gave the impression that they were moving with intent. However, they didn't make any maneuvers or rise or fall in elevation, they kept going straight from the beach, traversed the skinny island, and continued over the dark expanse of the bay until they faded from view. Nothing suggested aliens to me, although I suppose I can't eliminate that possibility, but I have no idea what they were. Again, I'm very familiar with the usual suspects of birds, drones, helicopters, meteors, satellites, and such. I can confidently say it was none of those, but I'll just have to keep it unknown. I travel around in boats every summer, and something weird happened. About two years ago, I was sailing back home. It was pretty calm, though it was dark, and I wasn't the best at navigating in the dark. Anyway, as I'm sailing, I hear a loud sound. It sounded like a faint scream. I was freaked out, as I was alone. I thought about going inside, the boat had a small cabin with a bed and important stuff, etc. I decided to turn my boat around and check. The noise got louder and louder, and I could finally make out the noise. It sounded like a whale. I was scared. So just as I got ready to turn my boat back to head home and forget about this night, I saw a shark. I had never seen a shark before, and I was terrified. For a moment, I just stood there, solid. And then, the whale's sound got louder, and as I turned around, I saw the whale attacking the shark. The shark wasn't that big, so it got defeated pretty easily. The whale then managed to stay about 10 feet away from the boat for about an hour. It then wandered off back to nature. It was a crazy experience, but now that I think about it, it's pretty cute. I never really went sailing alone after that. Overall, it was pretty cool. I know the exact explanation, what I don't know is how it's happened to me twice. I was driving a yacht as we were traveling to the Greek island of Milos. All was calm and nice until, at one point, we heard a loud bang, which I felt through the steering wheel, and then the whole boat started shaking and the engines weren't giving any acceleration. I dropped the anchor, turned the engine, and looked behind us. 
there was a huge pool of blood, so my theory about hitting a rock was out of the question. As I was putting up scuba gear to go check underneath the yacht for any holes, there weren't any, I saw pieces of a big sea turtle floating where the blood was, so we hit a fucking sea turtle. It's impossible to see them from the flybridge because they are underwater, but it hit both propellers and fucked up the yacht. It's happened to me twice, which seems like impossible odds for being in the middle of the ocean. I do travel to the UK and Scotland a lot, and I take a ferry to mainland Europe. I decided to head out to the deck to get some fresh air and see if I could get a good signal to contact my family. I get out there and it's dark and everything is normal, and all of a sudden the boat slammed something hard and flung me to the deck, and I remember my vision getting fuzzy and there being a loud bang. I thought we hit a ferry. I ran up to the command deck because my friend was the captain, and he said they don't know what happened. He said there were no leaks or fires. They had a medic come check on me because my head was bleeding from the fall. We made it to the mainland, and I got off, looked at the boat, and noticed there was a big dent in the hull. My friend said we probably hit apps of whales, but I've never known whales to cause that big of a dent. This happened when I was in the Navy back in the early 90s. We were sailing from Guam to Australia and were days away from land in every direction. I was standing aft of the fantail and hadn't heard anything over the sound-powered phone about any sighted contacts. I'm looking over the starboard side when I see us pass a red light no more than 100 feet away. I try to call it into the bridge, but my phone isn't working. In the 10 seconds it took me to swap my phone to another connection and look back up, the light was gone. This was a single, solitary red light. There was no green light and no white light, so it didn't appear to me to be a boat or a sailing vessel. To this day, I can't explain what it was or why the phone stopped working. A sound-powered phone doesn't use power, it uses sound to work. I worked on private yachts for three years. When out at sea, you have to watch, which means you are on the bridge for a couple hours at a time, monitoring all of the systems. Boats run on autopilot and generally only need adjustments to the course every couple of hours or so, so being on watch generally means you're stuck looking at the same expanse of grey water for a couple hours, waiting for something to happen, and trying to ignore the fact that you're seasick. If you're a fan of watching paint dry, being on watch is the job for you. It's also important to note that everyone working on a boat carries a radio, and that radio has to be on at all times. Now on this boat, I had the 2 to 6 watch. That meant from 2 to 6 AM and 2 to 6 PM, I had to be on the bridge. In between watches, I would just sleep, on account of being sleep deprived and nauseous for 100% of my waking hours. We had just entered the Bahamas Island chain around 11.30 AM, so the water had calmed down a bit. I was dead to the world, getting in my final hours of nap time before my watch started up, when my radio crackled to life with the calls of mayday mayday mayday, everyone to the bridge, we have a boat on fire. Now, mayday is only said over the radio when there could be imminent loss of life or limb. It's the OSHT button of the maritime world, the radio equivalent of SOS, the Titanic is fucking sinking, and we only have half the lifeboats we need. It's a bigger adrenaline rush than cocaine, and within seconds, I was out of bed and on the bridge. Sure as shit is brown, there was a 20-foot sailboat about 500 feet in front of us, engulfed in a ball of flames. It went up in about 10 seconds and burned like Australia. So we launched our rescue tender, grabbed the first aid kit, and set out to get as many bodies off that boat as possible. In a miraculous stroke of luck, there was only one person on board, and the only part of him that sustained injury were his eyebrows. We pulled him out of the water, got him checked over, and brought him with us to our next port. He lost everything except his life, and as we pulled away, his boat sank in 800 feet of water. Make no mistake, boats are dangerous. Fiberglass goes up in flames fast, and when you're in the open ocean, your chances of survival are slim. He was lucky we were there, because it's not often you get two boats in the same place like that. Keep your epirbs close, and always have a life raft on board. Other than that, I saw the New Year's Eve fireworks off of Richard Branson's island in the BVI's. He puts on a great display every year. The stars are brilliant too, if the whole world shut off the lights for one night, you wouldn't believe what you could see. This wasn't on the ocean but an inland lake, which actually makes the story even weirder. Lake Kagawang is the second biggest lake on Manitoulin Island. So big in fact that it actually has its own islands within it. While the lake itself is huge, it's not actually connected to the Great Lakes other than by a river that goes over a waterfall. This means that only small recreational boats capable of being launched off a trailer can enter the lake at the three or four small launch areas. The saying was said one day when my dad and I were out in our 23-foot bow rider, which was one of the bigger boats on the lake, when we spotted a large black ship slowly moving towards one of the islands on the far side of the lake. 
It wasn't a sailing ship or anything you'd expect a ghost ship to look like, in fact, it looked like a super yacht you'd see in places like Monaco. It disappeared behind the island, which was large enough to hide it entirely. We drove the boat over towards it, but by the time we got over there, the mystery vessel was gone. We drove the whole perimeter of the lake and saw no trace of this massive boat. While the lake is plenty big enough to accommodate a vessel of this size, hell, you could comfortably drive the Titanic around in there. There is no way a boat of that size could have gotten into that lake. There is no navigable waterway connecting the lake to the big water, and the only launch ramps are very small, and even then, that ship was too big to be hauled on a truck. Even if it were, the shorelines are pretty rocky and steep in most places, and there's nowhere to set up the cranes and other necessary equipment required to actually get a vessel of this size into the water. Nobody ever saw the ship again after that. No one else on the lake had ever seen it either, so we never got an explanation. This was an old boat, built in 1926, with A with a wood hull. At the time, we had it set up for dragging sea scallops. Once in a while we would be out on an overnight trip, and you would be laying in your bunk in the middle of the night listening to the waves lapping against the bow, and all of a sudden you would hear a sharp knocking against the side of the wood hull from the outside. Sometimes from under the boat, sometimes higher up along the sides, but always where it would be at least a couple feet underwater. Sometimes just one or two sharp knocks, sometimes a flutter like the drumming of fingers on a desk, but very distinct and, dare I say, deliberate. And it would usually come in waves. It would happen multiple times over the course of a few minutes and then not again for the rest of the night. It came up in conversation a few times with some of the other guys, and the only somewhat plausible explanation was that it was actually sea scallops swimming up and bouncing off the bottom of the boat. The theory was that when a scallop bed became overcrowded or otherwise unsuitable, some of them would swim up into the water column and drift along with the upper current to find new areas to populate, and the sound we heard was their shells hitting the boat as we drifted through a school of them. I have no idea if there's any science to back that up, and it sounds pretty dubious to me, but it's not like I have a better explanation for it. I mean, besides mermaids.